I'm Zach. I'll be over here. I'm already. I'm already in talks, talkings with uh, Daniel Swan. He's been. He's been sitting here suffering through me while we try to figure out some <laughs> ding dang technical issues. But this is cool. This is the first time we've ever actually gotten to like talk face to face. So that's kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ish. I can't. I still can't see you. Oh really? But okay. yeah, it's just mm. too squares like rotating around each other unless that is a form <laughs> that, that you have is, taken over yes. the last few minutes <laughs> you have achieved a higher form of consciousness yeah and then now it's oh you've you've hit the kind of the two rotating cubes style yes. of life i'm on that next next well, dimension it's just huge cubes. congrats i know you've been gunning <laughs> for it for a number of years yeah and it's just very gratifying I'll tell you there's no corn really dogs stupid. here and i'm a little upset about that but you know, I don't know if you're a fan <laughs> of the corn dog. <laughs> uh, I've, I have uh, I have corn dogs in the past. It felt like one of those kind of American things that you have oh, to yeah. kind of dive in with, um, and I did. And I, you know what? I I did not have a bad time with it. I did yeah. not have a bad time. Corn dogs. Hmm. That's the one thing I'm gonna miss about uh, the state fair this year because I'm guessing there's not gonna be one, but. Last year, there was like I mean, an got... hour-long line, so I didn't even get one last year when I was there. Oh, shit. They're that That's good. Nice. That good. Yeah. So what, um, I mean, but you're in Texas, yes? Yes. So there might be. <laughs> there there might shouldn't be. One... be oh, yeah. There might... <laughs> they might find a way. We were talking about it the <laughs> other day, like, I wonder... Because, you know, I guess they have to rent the fairgrounds and stuff. But what if they just went, yeah. all right, we're going to take all that money for setting up rides and all that kind of stuff that we'd have to dish out. And let's let's buy a fleet or, like, rent a fleet of food trucks and take the take the state fair to the people. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how cost effective that would be, but I would appreciate yeah. it if they pulled up with a truck full of fryers in front of my house. Jesus, yeah. Or, like, five of them, so you can have the choice of the state. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, do you want this? Do you want elephant ears? Do you want... What's an elephant ear? Thing? So, it's big, I assume that was in America. Too. It's, a, it's a thing that... It was a, a, a fair uh, in Seattle, and that everyone was like, oh, dude, you got to try it. Dude. You never even heard of a fucking elephant ear. <laughs> um, it's just like a big, like a... Kind of like a pancake of sorts but just kind of covered in sugar and cinnamon stuff quite thin. That um, sounds yeah. really familiar, but I don't know that I've ever had one. I know the plant, the I'm, elephant ear. Elephant ear food. Oh, I mean, it did not taste like a plant, I can tell you that. It did not taste <laughs> like it had any okay. nutritional plant-based goodness in it. Um, but it was. It, it, it's very possible that there is it's something that I've learned about America, that it's you know, food-wise, there's lots of shared DNA mm -hmm. that you can travel four miles down the road and they'll call it an entirely different thing. That's exactly it. Now that I'm seeing it uh, down down in the south, in Texas especially, I guess, given that we're, you know, just bumping up against Mexico, uh, that would be, it looks to be uh, like what they would call a monuelo, which is, oh. yeah, just like a fried fried dough disc with you know like you said cinnamon and sugar and stuff on it those are delicious yeah. i mean everything just sounds better in spanish doesn't yeah it? <laughs> take My... this little kind of just disgusting just dough and sugar and cinnamon and then you give it to the yeah. spanish language it like, rolls oh, off, yeah <laughs> i will make it the song that's so beautiful <laughs> Ugh. I that was one thing I did want to ask you about was like if if you were because you seemed like a pretty I mean I could I could be wrong and maybe it's the not me crossing in with the with your <laughs> with your actual personality but are you like a disciplined type kind of person like do you feel like you you're pretty well disciplined as far as like just, I'm not gonna eat this total garbage over here because I'm I eat responsibly and you know and the like. Um... 
I, I feel like I'm kind of maybe becoming a bit more disciplined as I get older, but more down to it with food. But more that I think that's more based on necessity because my, you know, 34 year old body just doesn't process <laughs> things as well. And I can like, hey, yeah, yeah. I've just eaten shit all day. Uh-huh. I'm going to go, you know, going to go walking somewhere. I'm like, I ate some bad stuff and I, you know, oh, <laughs> end yeah. up melting into a couch, um, which is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. But I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Try and be a bit good. My, my bad one is my, uh, uh, my teeth situation because I eat too much uh, and have for the entirety of my life eaten too much sugar mm. and not brush my teeth enough. Yeah. Um, and so uh, who, t- who knew that that would lead to a uh, teeth <laughs> problem? So that's, that's something that I really try and, I try and limit to kind of weekends only now, having like real kind of uh, sweet things because otherwise teeth are just going to fall out by the time I'm 40. I mean, most of them are <laughs> well on the way already, but... Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. You try and be disciplined, don't you? but I still, like, my wife t- tends to try and limit us to kind of one takeaway or delivery meal a week, and I always mm-hmm. want more than that. So I'm still, I'm not, it helps to have someone there to say, to be the angel on your shoulder, yeah. like, dude, <laughs> you don't fucking need that. Yeah. Come on, man, let's just make something nice at home. Yeah, we've been uh, really trying to... Yeah, oh man, we've been trying to do that too. Like once, once a week. This week, I think we've eaten out like three times just in the last couple of days because we did do, get yeah. through two weeks with successfully eating only one meal out, and so we were like, "Party!" <laughs> plus that, plus the check that's coming up is you know like middle of the month, so you know it's just it's all hamburgers. It just doesn't know it yet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it's it's it, that is one of the again a, a shocking thing of, of being in this country of speaking to people and the amount of, I don't know whether this is like just my wife talking to kind of Amazon people and Amazon people are a different breed, but like the amount that people eat out is astonishing. Like yeah. they'll consider themselves, Oh, I'm, I'm a good home cook because I cooked at home three times last week. <laughs> like, are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. So that's something, yeah, that's, that's a, a, a bit of a shock effort. Uh, for me, I just like I think for me, it's not even like oh my god, I'm such a better person because I don't eat out much. But like, the, if you eat out all the time, mm-hmm. it just it loses the the fun of it. I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're just like looking at another menu, like oh, what mm-hmm. do I want today? You know, There's, like when you're on holiday or something, and you you kind of eat out every. By the time you get to the end of that week of holiday, you're like, oh, just I just want to cook something at home. <laughs> I just want a turkey sandwich. <laughs> 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 That's all I'm after. Here. Yeah, <laughs> or a salad. There is a Mexican salad. restaurant. I would just. So, what was your is your favorite? What is your favorite guilty pleasure as far as this uh, eating eating out? I mean, generally, if it's if it's my turn to pick a takeaway, it will just be a big fat dirty burger. Turkey burger. Um, I no dirty. Oh, like dirty burgers! Yeah, yeah, like the wrappers, like just, transparent because from all the grease. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> it's it's the the the, uh, the Nick test of like oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if it goes translucent, then you can. Eat it. Perfect! Um, I forgot about yeah, that. Just like dirty, like American plastic cheese mm. and uh, loads of pickles. That's that's a that's a, a again a big American thing. That it just it doesn't translate across across the pond, which is a real shame. Pickles, the, the prevalence of pickles. We call them huh. gherkins in the UK. Oh, okay. And they they will show up. I mean, they're in McDonald's and stuff. Mm-hmm. But the amount of people that, like, in any group of friends, seemingly of like six friends, two of them will take the gherkins out of the burger. I'm like, Are you huh. out of your fucking yeah, mind? it's it's such on? a good combo. Yeah. And then in this country, the fact that you get them on the burger, and then they just give you like a quarter of a whole thing on the side. It's like, yeah, yeah, come on, snap. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We. Uh, what about you? What's your uh, What's your? I'm a burrito food? guy. I'm burrito pizza oh, guy, yeah. but like uh, burritos. I had one yesterday. It was called the kitchen sink breakfast burrito. And it, I mean, it really did have everything. It had every breakfast meat, 
carne asada, mushrooms, grilled peppers, jalapenos. I was suffering through the rest of the day, but man, that was like 30 <laughs> minutes of bliss for for that little bit. But I I like to get my food and then like sit on it and you know like um I don't I I mean you're in Seattle. I don't know if you're a fan of of the the herbals. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I yeah we, uh, I did a lot. Of, I did a decent amount at um, college, but haven't really uh, partake. We have like edible stuff. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That we that we do, but yeah, we're not we're not too much on the smoking anymore. Yeah, that's probably. Good. I need to quit because I do cigarettes as well, and that's just. Uh, yeah. I got the daily Them lung. daily phlegm in the morning and all that good stuff. So it's probably <laughs> it's probably time to quit. But yeah, I like to uh, I'll get my food and then just kind of wait till I'm you know more in the mood to eat it. But burritos, all rolled up as they are, they hold their heat like forever. So you can you know oh, you good. can it's got a shelf life <laughs> of uh, yeah tasty town. Just like the fact that it's just a it's a brick of food. <laughs> it's so dense. Yeah, it comes in its own the thing that you kind of unwrap. So there's oh, yeah. like drama to it. It's just <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. And as I, as I believe I said on uh, in the the comments of one of your drawing things, like I'm not above a chipotle. A lot of no, people consider no. themselves above a chipotle. I'll go nuts for a chipotle. It's not my favorite, but if if you catch me in the right mood, like I'm definitely okay oh. with some chipotle. Oh yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you have free birds up there? Uh, we do not have free birds. No. Ah, that's my that's my choice. Burrito, mm. Emporium. What makes them so good? I don't know. They're better at rolling them than Chipotle because I don't know. It's pretty much just like a half open diaper when you go to like <laughs> Chipotle. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they uh, and I think they have they have a little bit more variety of. Uh, add additives and you know like the veggies and stuff like that and it's less yeah. salsas and more like individual stuff okay that's fair enough that sounds good and i guess y'all don't have whataburger either are you aware of the whataburger uh I the, the name rings a bell i may have had one on one of my travels but no they're not they're not up here really what is what makes a it is Whataburger, Whataburger. Whataburger. That pretty much sums it up. Like, it's just Texas as hell. Like, it's... And, um, <laughs> the... Their thing, like, all their burgers, it's not like a mayonnaise. The mayonnaise, you gotta ask for it if you want it. They're mustard and pickles and onions. Like, that is their... Their okay. thing. It's... Some people say it's, like, too acidic, but I think it's just perfect with the buttery, greasy hamburger juice and then you know that tart pickle and mustard and it's just it's great and then the onions and then your nice. breath smells terrible all day but it's real good <laughs> but you'll probably you might get some eventually they just recently got bought out they were i guess like a texas owned uh an operating okay. company for a long time and they just recently got bought out by some company in new jersey so i think they're trying to expand a little uh, bit right yeah well, I'll keep my fingers crossed that they oh, make yeah. their way up the uh, up to the northwest. I'm just gonna send you. I'm gonna send you their menu. <laughs> you could just scroll through and be like, "Oh God, where where is the closest one of these?" Because they have some gnarly is... sandwich, and they're all like half pound plus burgers. Like they do not make little burgers. Wow. Yeah. Proper Texas. Uh, yeah, for real. Now I'm uh, nice. now I'm real nice. hungry. Now I'm, now I'm real hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I haven't had breakfast yet. That's bullshit. <sighs> um, so you, so you have been. Because I was thinking when uh, uh, on the uh, drawing one last night, um, so I don't actually know that much about you. And people that stumble upon your podcast might not know that much about you as well. So maybe let's delve in. Um, so you're a, you're a Texas like have always been Texas. Yeah, yeah. Born and raised. I haven't really. I mean, I say I haven't been a whole lot of other places, mostly just mm -hmm. in the U.S. Like, I, I haven't really been. I've been kind of, you know, the Georgia, Mississippi, Florida, kind of that whole bottom area. I've kind of been through there, but not, okay. not really much. Been to Mexico, been to Ireland one time. Nice. That was pretty sweet. But nice. Yeah, just, just straight up Texas. It's kind of a miracle that I even got out of my hometown. 
because <laughs> pretty much everybody <laughs> I went to high school with is still just sitting right back there. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And what's your what's your favorite thing about Texas? Um, probably just the space. Like I, I mean, yeah. and and there is maybe not so much anymore, but it used to be a state where you had kind of every kind of weather, you know, like in the the one state. Not so much anymore. Yeah. Like there's not really any places that are getting any snow in Texas anymore, but once upon a time. Yeah. But that's that's pretty much it. I don't I don't I love it just because it's like Stockholm syndrome kind of, you know. It's just like, <laughs> well, they they've got me. I I'm I'm just here, but I don't I don't hate it at all. I had a really cool childhood growing up in the country and just tons of space to run around and woods and all that kind of stuff. It was neat. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And like, um, is it, so would you consider yourself kind of a country boy, like one of these kind of outdoorsy people never more at home than, you know, I, I would like to think so. And the wind on your back. But I've really, yeah. I've really always been kind of a, a soft boy. <laughs> you know, video <laughs> games and just sitting in my room drawing and stuff. But you know, I I can yeah. appreciate some outdoor time. But uh, I definitely yeah. like air conditioning. Probably yeah. more more outdoor, than that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No pleasure, no rapture, no exquisites and greater. No. Um, so, in terms of the your kind of creative pursuit, so you do the you do the um, drawing, but you do the music as well. What what came first? Uh, drawing, definitely. I've been drawing it drawing. Since, since I was a little kid. And, you know, as soon as you get that first, oh, that's really good, then you're just like, mm, <laughs> I'm going to keep doing this. I need all, I need that. More and more and more of that. Uh, but, nice. yeah, I, I do enjoy it um, just as of recently. You know, like Until I started doing the, the streams or whatever, I had just kind of given up on it, you know, like just on, okay. on everything really, because, yeah. and I've, I've talked about this in other interviews, but, um, I got a DWI in like 2011 and mm -hmm. that just wrecked me like mentally. I was just like, yeah. Oh my God, I'm a, I'm a degenerate now. No one's ever going to touch me ever again. So I, okay. you know, I just, I just, I I don't know. I lost my lost my shit there for a good ten years. Okay. I'm starting to feel human. Do you again. feel like you're getting it back? Yeah. I'm starting to feel like a person <laughs> again. Well that's great. Yeah. That's great, man. I mean everybody, you know, everybody's gonna lose something at some point, but it's about yeah, if you're able to find it again, then that's that's all we can do, right? Yeah. For sure. Nice. Nice. And so what would be like in terms of the, in terms of the art, in terms of the kind of, you know, the, the drawing art, what, it, what would be in an ideal world, what would be the kind of the, the end, end product of that, of the, the kind of the zenith of that? I'd like, like what, like I, if I could ideally work on an ultimate project, is that what you're saying? I mean, is it, yeah, is it like, you know, doing design work <laughs> on a video game? about doing like oh, um, a concept art for a movie or a comic book or I think one of the things that has also hindered me is wanting to do all of it <laughs> so I, <laughs> I hop from thing to thing I have done some minor video game kind of work because they make software that almost just writes the nice. game for you and you just have to do like the art and stuff for it so that was perfect oh, shit. but I never nice. I didn't keep up with it um I don't know why. I think I had a, I have this thing where I want to include other people in my projects, even if they have okay. no interest in being a part of it or not. <laughs> and so then, and, and, and I hinge everything on them working with me. And then when they go, then I'm just like, well, I don't want to do this anymore either. I don't want to do this by myself. Yeah. But um, yeah, I guess comic books a comic book would would be really cool a finished fully fleshed out story um, yeah that i mean just really completing anything worth anything worth you know like just yeah a thing a solid thing that you can hold up and be like 
this. I I did I did all this, and you know what? It's pretty darn good. You know, just nice. Yeah, I don't know. Nice. Uh, well, I guess well, anim- animation originally is what it started, but drawing still uh, pictures is a lot easier than drawing moving pictures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I imagine animation must be just an absolute ball ache in terms of doing There's so much to do. Yeah. And so much drawing. So, like... Yeah. Yeah. Just a disgusting amount of um, art that needs to be produced for... Oh yeah, so so you worked on it all month. So this is like fifteen seconds of <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just you're just sweating and smoking cigarettes at your desk, drawing all this stuff, and then yeah, look at this, look at this minute. I got I got sixty full seconds. Uh, that's six hundred and eighty thousand pictures. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know math. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's you know, if if that's if that's something that you want to do, I'm sure you I'm sure you'll find your way to do. It's a lot easier. You can find that now with with the software that's available, like Flash. Even you know, I don't think I don't know if anybody even uses Flash anymore since it's not for because like web browsers don't support it anymore. I don't think. Yeah, or that's something nice. like that. I got a thing like Chrome told me the other a couple of months ago, maybe now. It's like, oh yeah, we're not supporting Flash anymore. Ah, felt like a real like yeah like a a kind of a thing from uh, from you know not childhood that makes it sound ridiculous but like (laughs) as as a a young man growing up I mean it then got me thinking of all the like um, flash games yeah that people just don't kids just don't know about anyone this kind of weird world and like oh so like apps like things you play on your phone no no (laughs) <laughs> Not even that good at all. Just yeah. some crazy dude in his room who's decided that he wants to make some kind of shooting game to shoot, like, rabbits or something. Yeah. And so he just, you know, and he just makes it and he puts it out and he makes no money from it and he just doesn't care. Yeah, pure joy. Just, just, just for the full he, self-fulfillment. Yeah. Like. yeah. I want to kill <laughs> rabbits and I want to kill the golden girl. And then you get all the blood everywhere. And, yeah. I don't it. Yeah, and you play that for five minutes. You're like, this is great. <laughs> that was really hot shit. Like Flash, Flash was like the king, like in the early two thousands. Like you know, like Newgrounds dot com. Do you remember? Did you ever go to yeah. that website? That was a huge yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of big stuff yeah. came from from there. Like the do you did you ever see the Dick Figures cartoon? It was Dick Figures. That's what it was. It was called, but it was like. Uh, it was just about two dudes who were like assholes, and they were stick figures. Oh, right. uh, but those right. were really funny, and they ended up making like a movie and stuff out of that. I mean, it wasn't like, really? theatrically released, but yeah, you gotta love you gotta love all the uh, crowdfunding stuff. You know, like yeah. I haven't tried any of it because I don't have a pro. Uh, one, I can't make the commitment to actually follow through with whatever I'm planning to do. <laughs> and I don't want to be just everybody yelling at me like, hey, I gave you money for that. Where the hell is the thing? Where's the thing? So, but like, oh, I really great. Wanna, I really want to make something. And then someone says, oh, why don't you do this kind of crowdfunding thing? And you ask other people for it and they give you money. And then you have like, you know, $11,000 to do it. You know? I don't know, man. That sounds like a lot of pressure to <laughs> do it. Sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if I to do it in three weeks. Jesus. Yeah. Um, Have you ever tried any of that stuff? Is there any big no, project that you no. ever tried? It's my it's my kind of British uh, self effacing nature. I think that uh, I just well, yeah, I wouldn't ever consider something that I would do important enough that other people should spend their money on it, I think. Oh, really? Like, oh, no, and it's just this little thing. And, you know, and, uh, um, and then also, I, I I kind of cap my, I don't know, I cap my plans, I think, very much in terms of, like, at a certain level. Um, and I don't, like, because it's, it's something that, that has always bothered me when people do things, and maybe this is more just about films but when people 
<laughs> it sounds so bad when people reach too far with their films, when people try too okay. hard. But like when people make a film that they should, that in my opinion, they should only make if they had like six times the amount of money. Mm-hmm. And they try and kind of scrape by just doing it with no money. I just think, well, that looks so much worse yeah. than if you, because you're trying to put in all these like, special effects or whatever when it would have been a lot better to just kind of work very much within your right you know this is what i can achieve this is what is available to me so i'm just going to do something good that kind of is supposed to be low budget it's kind of like a very uh, a kind of a smaller version of like uh blumhouse films okay you know like uh i don't know the purge or uh, sinister or any number of these kind of horror films that come out they have really reduced casts. Mm-hmm. And they have really reduced locations, and so they are low budget films. But because they're all very kind of, they're more just kind of contained films, so they just happen to not cost that much money. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know another film will will try and do something bigger on a smaller budget, and I just think it ends up looking a lot more cheap and pony than if you just kind of do something smaller. So I think yeah, for me. I, yeah, I, I I always would try and, yeah, whenever I'm thinking of things that I want to film, even when I was, you know, a teenager and I was like, oh, yeah, we'll do this thing, and we'll do this gangster film, and we'll all be gangsters, and we'll, I just think, but we're not gangsters, are we? We're teenage <laughs> boys. So let's just make a film about teenage yeah. boys so it won't look stupid. I don't know. I don't know. So, <laughs> I yeah, feel like that's I one of it's the... My, it's my... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I think that's no, one no, of the no, first rules that I like when it, you know, in film school or whatever that I, that I was heard. It's like when you're deciding what to, to make, just take, take stock of, you know, like what you have at your disposal at that moment yeah. and just write everything around that. Like you're, like you were saying, yeah, that's, I mean, cause then sure you, you get that one. You need, I need a, a, a unicorn drawn carriage to fly through the sky and land on a lake. <laughs> and you know, like how, how are you going to do that? How are you going to do that, you idiot? Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh. It's like, no, 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 it's great. We'll just film the empty sky, yeah. and then we'll like draw some pictures. And I'm like, come on. Get some uh, unicorn uh, gifts. Well. And, uh, <laughs> like, have you seen uh, the movie Birdemic? I have not seen the movie Birdemic, no. Oh. I think that you would have a lot of fun with that one on for <laughs> if you did a, a flicks uh, episode on it. Oh, yeah. This guy i can't remember his name let me look it up real quick um he he makes terrible movies and right he 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 says that he coined his own genre and it's called like horror romance or or something like something okay. like that i but his movies are they're so bad but birdemic is particularly hilarious it is <laughs> This thinly veiled, like, uh, global warming PSA. Like, it's it's the birds, you know, essentially, but not yeah. with any real birds. Not even with any, like, fake handmade birds. It's all bird gifts. Yeah. It's bird gifts <laughs> flying around. They're flying into buildings, and the buildings are exploding and it's oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, I was right. Horror romance is the genre. Horror romance. Um. Oh man, let me just. <laughs> a sexy, a sexy lingerie model and a successful software salesman go on a weekend getaway to a quaint northern California town. That's 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 the end of the description of the movie. Nothing about the birds. <laughs> Nothing about <laughs> Jesus. So his name's James Wynn. James Wynn. James but Wynn. The movie had a budget of ten thousand dollars. He, yeah. whenever he was trying to like, what do you what do you call it when you're? Is it op option not optioning? When you're trying to get it into like festivals and shopping it when you're shopping a film. Yeah. Kind of, okay. Yeah. Let's go with that. The he, shopping. Definitely. He bought a van. And put a bunch of fake birds that he could have used in the movie, but he he did not. <laughs> and they were on springs, and he would just drive his stupid bird van all around and have like private screenings of his ridiculous movie. So I'll give That's him that. I'll great. give it. He's got gumption. I'll give him that. I mean, 
this is it. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, you can you can you can laugh at him, but it's it's worked because we're talking about a ten thousand right. dollar uh, movie. It's so bad that it's it's good. I mean, you know, like it's not good. You know, it's it's a terrible <laughs> movie, but. Like you said, it leaves a mark on you. Like you, you can't unsee yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's, it's, it, yeah, it feeds into that, the idea of, you know, there is no, there is no good, good and bad films. There are just enjoyable and not enjoyable films. And yeah, yeah. that is, you know, entirely determined by the people that watch it. If somebody watches a film and enjoys it and wants to watch it again. Yeah, I've watched and it. That is I've good. watched it several times, as bad as it is, because I have <laughs> yeah. to show people. I have to show it to people. <laughs> and one time it was on uh, it was on Netflix for a while, and I tried to watch oh, yeah. it with someone, and the audio on this movie only did not work. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. Let's watch it with no audio, and let's just talk shit about it the whole time. <laughs> I gotta. See, I'm gonna send you oh, the trailer cool. for you to peep later on because it is nice. it's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> In that kind of uh, Sharknado kind of school yes. of yes, yeah, the CG shit. But if it's crazy enough, people will just go with it. Yeah, yeah Sharknado yeah. really took on a life of its own, didn't it? Aren't there like five or six of those movies now? Jesus Christ, there's tons of them. As soon as I saw that Kurt Angle, uh, WWE's Kurt Angle was in my <laughs> this, is, this is too much. This is too much now. I was surprised they were able to pull, uh, what's his name, from 90210. The, uh, what is that kid's name? I think Luke it was Perry? 90210. No, it's um, the curly-haired... Blonde guy. Um, I'm gonna find it. Sharknado. I think he's in find the it. first one. Uh, cast, cast, cast. Yep, here he is. Ian Ziering. Oh, I yeah, his name rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. If you saw him, you'd be like, oh, oh Tara Reed, Tara Reed. Oh, what a combo! What a combo! Jesus Christ! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you yeah, if you reduce the Tara Reid, then she, you know something's gone wrong. I feel bad, but like when when I hear her name, my brain just goes trash bag, trash bag. <laughs> like, I, I, don't know. I feel bad. It must. I, I mean, whatever. You you you. I would, mean, it you, seems like it seems like over the last you know how a decade maybe I don't know that she's been working hard to to cultivate that image. Oh really? Surely, surely it's been deliberate. Otherwise, I mean, why would she yeah. have done the thing Jeez. Yeah. So off her face, that isn't that like boob fallout on a red carpet once, and she was so <laughs> off her face that she didn't even realize. Oh my goodness! And so there's these pictures of her just like glassy eyed, smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, I mean, I've been yeah. messed up in my day, but never, never to the point that I have <laughs> no idea what I'm doing or what's going on around yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. At least not well, in no, public. Have... <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Not not when I'm going to a movie premiere or, yeah. you know, the opening of a fucking restaurant or whatever it is that these people go to. Um, <laughs> whatever these people do with their time. Uh, <laughs> Hi, we'd like to invite you to, yeah. You haven't even heard what no, I'm going. No, I want it. Yeah, but maybe it's another. I'll, I'll be there. Ticket, please. Yeah, 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 I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm all about. That's what I'm all about. They're going to be cameras. They're going to be cameras there. I'm coming. I'm going to be there. Yeah. Do you want me to get my boots out? I'll get my boots out. I don't care. <laughs> we'll call it an accident. Yeah, I just get so mashed up. It'll just probably happen anyway. Don't worry about it. Are you a fan of the South Park? And the South Park fellas, Matt and Stone. Matt and I Matt Park, have. Why well, I can't say their names. I all have of a sudden. watched uh, several episodes and enjoyed them. It's never been something that I sought out. However, the movie is something that I have watched many, many times, mm-hmm. and I would wholeheartedly consider that to be a five star. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, I think did we talk about this before? Work. I feel like we, we, might, we might have brought this. I just, I love those guys. Like, I, I love how much yeah. they're just like, you know what? 
we got here doing whatever the hell we wanted to do. And uh, yeah. that's not going to change. We're just going to keep doing whatever we want to do. And uh, yeah, you can mess with us, and we'll just mess right back with you. Like, we don't give a shit. Easy yeah. come, easy go. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they've got a very... Have you seen um, that documentary that was done about... Oh, what's it called? Like, Six Days to Air yeah. or something? That was very cool. Was a, Inspirational. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's really interesting how they how they work and their relationship together mm -hmm. in that they will kind of fully like Matt Stone will fully admit like that he does not do as much work yeah. as like uh Trey Parker's like the kind of this crazy visionary guy, but that he can't do what he does unless Matt Stone's there to kind of Wrangle work with him. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Very neat. And Very I feel cool. like those kind of relationships are probably not as rare as it seems. Mm -hmm. But that they're just, like you say, open and honest enough to say, yeah, this is the situation. He, he, he has these crazy visions and I have to kind of, you know, act like a sheepdog and kind yeah. of keep them in. You know. um, yeah, I just think it's a really interesting and really nice, way of working is clearly such a, a kind of a nice relationship that the two of them have. Do you find yourself, um, like is jealousy something that you, uh, harbor on a regular basis for, you know, um, something so stupid as like, you know, like, Oh, I'm so jealous of Matt Stone or Trey Parker. Cause goddamn, they just, they, they got it all. And they just, they, you know, it's not so much anymore. Like I've kind of, grown out of it it's like yeah, they just got a really good job you know like that's really the yeah. the bottom line but uh how about yourself yeah i uh, yeah there's a, a little bit of that i think I, like yourself it was uh it's something that i've grown out of the older i've got um you start to kind of i don't know i think the older i get the more i try and reevaluate success Mm -hmm. and and happiness and stuff and i don't know whether that's me just trying to kind of reframe it so it's like no i'm doing a right so you can yeah. feel good but, no, no I, I yeah exactly i yeah. wonder the same thing but i mean either way what, whatever it takes to get to a place of contentment you know what i mean or you know the yeah just feeling good about it i mean whatever we all tell tell ourselves lies <laughs> but it's fine yeah no, it's absolutely. whatever and like the, it, for, for me it was there's a lot of it. Um, so when I went to university uh, for the second and third years, um, I lived with uh, three other guys in this house. Uh, and it was great. Lots and lots of fun. Uh, and they were all lovely people. Um, but since university, they have all kind of stayed much more in touch than I have with them. Um, and one of them is now uh, a DJ on like either the drive time shift, like on a very, very prestigious um, uh, shift, I suppose you'd call it, on like one of the biggest radio stations in the UK. So mm. he's very successful and he's had books and TV shows and stuff. Um, one of the other guys uh, is a pretty, uh, a relatively successful stand-up and then the other one um, is a stand-up as well and it's the first, you know, the Edinburgh Festival. Um it's like a big kind of, uh, I mean, the festival that happens in Edinburgh, it's, it happens every August. Um, and it's like probably one of the biggest comedy festivals that there is. There's lots of theatre there as well, but it's mainly the kind of um, stand-up comedy. Uh, and the, the third guy who lived in the house uh, is the only person in history to have won the best newcomer one year and then the next year won the kind of the best in the best in the whole festival, the best of the wow. festival. Wow. So he's very successful as well. Uh, and there was a few years that I, was, that, that I would get pretty, um, yeah, pretty jealous when, like, whenever one of them, came, you know, was on the radio or on the TV or whatever, or, mm -hmm. or getting praised highly. And there's that little kind of voice, like, oh, fucking hell, that's annoying. <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, I think the older I get, the more, yeah, I think, I think there's a, um, Especially over here, actually, there's this, you know, the, the kind of the money equals success or yeah. 
success equals happiness. And I think the older I get, the more, I don't know, the more content I get. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the, the, the trying to try and judge myself based on my own, I don't know, my own barometer or my own rankings or whatever, as opposed to in comparison with other people. Sure. Yeah. I think that's a pretty important thing to, to get to. Um, yeah, I mean, there's it's still, you know, little pangs of jealousy. Oh, I'd like to do that. Or I'd like to do that. That's a fun opportunity or I wish I could do that. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think if you're, you know, just trying to do this, taking steps to, to being creatively fulfilled, mm -hmm. I, I, I think not, I think not me helps a lot with that, to be honest, um, of, of doing something that, that you're enjoying and it, that, that being the, that being the joy and not necessarily being like, yeah, but do I get paid for it? Yeah, but right. do I, you know, am I doing it on TV? Yeah, but am I doing it to thousands of people? Um, if you're doing something and work for me, at least that, that kind of, I think, staves off a lot of the jealousy. So I think, well, they don't have a live show every week. I mean, <laughs> a live show every day on radio, but <laughs> do you know what I mean? Finding your own kind of little, little things. This is what I enjoy doing and this is what I'm doing. So yeah, I'm doing all right. I gotta say, man, I really like the, uh, you know, even if nobody is watching when I'm doing the live draw or the, the talk show, which, you know, I don't, I want to call it something else, but <laughs> nothing has, has come to mind yet. Um, but even, even if nobody's watching, it's still the, the live environment and the fact that it's just like, cool, I've got this section of time that's just it's just going out there, you know, like, and, and yeah. any, I could do anything, anything could happen. Anybody could stumble upon it, whatever it, I, that's, it's kind of exciting. The, just the live aspect yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it really, yeah, it adds a, a definite extra little, um, yeah, a little free sound of excitement. Headaches sometimes for sure. But <laughs> also that when it yeah. comes to, technical shit. <laughs> yeah. um but yeah um for the most part it's yeah it's joyous and i'm i mean uh i mean i i owe you a lot i guess like because i mean you definitely inspired me to do the the live thing like twitch is something i never really would have thought of touching as far as a from a podcast kind of perspective you know because i think of yeah. it just like everybody else is like, video games and you just want to just yeah, watch yeah. People play. but so i'm very thankful that uh that you started doing it and have been putting uh -huh. out such wonderful times that your quiz show is what i started watching first and that was such a blast <laughs> i you know <laughs> i uh let's let's go ahead and plug that right now <laughs> sure. Let's yeah. Do let's do it. Go ahead. It's happening in what eight hours? Just under eight hours. We'll be doing another quiz. It's episode ten. Nice. Um, the, one, the yay or nay is going to be about um, zippers because <laughs> you decide to be a prick and uh, try and fuck with my. Show. I really wasn't trying to. <laughs> I wasn't trying to like hoodwink you or anything. I was just I panicked, and that was for whatever reason the first thing that popped into my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fine, man. It's good because, I, and I was like, oh, "What the fuck am I going to do?" But I have actually found five questions or five statements based on different um, <laughs> uh, zippers in pop culture. Oh, I can't so, wait, man! I'm uh, excited. Yeah, you know what? One... I guarantee that that like nobody's going to know Shit, more than maybe one or two of them. Yeah, but, I mean, it's all about guesswork, and it's fun. One question that uh, popped into my head afterwards because I was like, "Fuck, maybe, maybe I should see if I can think of one or two. I mean, like it wouldn't be fair for me to participate in it or whatever. But like, I was like, there were sixty-seven zippers on Michael Jackson's "Beat It" jacket or whatever, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that kind of thing. It's like, yeah, when when have, when have zippers been the focus of stuff? <laughs> when have zippers? When do zippers get to get their time to shine? Yeah, um, we take them for granted. That, I said, I said that to my wife. I was like, "Oh, please!" Last night, got to do, you know, finished, went through all the questions for Iron Smart on Thursday, and I, you know, even the, the zippers one. 
and she was like, are you talking about something about Mary at some point? I was like, yeah, back to that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that was the only one that I could think of myself or the other ones I had to Google. That's like, awesome. I, I totally forget about that. Culture, what are we doing? I forgot about that movie. When did yeah, that movie that's, come that's, out? That's like, that's a, because oh, I remember gosh. kids in, uh, you know, like maybe middle school or something, they'd come in and they'd just rattle on about, you semen in her hair, bro. Like, it's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when, when would that be? Like 90, 96, 8, Oh, you got it. 1998. 1998. Whoa. Whew. Jack and Ori. 13-year-old me. And I guess you, because we're the same <laughs> age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like just being there, probably a little too young for it. Yeah. Not really understanding all of it, but I mean... A dog jumping out of a window, that's funny no matter what you're yeah. so. <laughs> Was that a Farley Brothers yeah. movie? I think it was, yeah. I think that was that was one of the first ones that they did that hit big. Sure. And then is they Farley. Yeah, kind of hit on that uh template of like yeah. okay, so kind of gross raunchy, crazy stuff yeah. going on. Yeah. Raunchy. That's such a uh <laughs> feels like such a an advertising executive's word. Yeah. Oh, it's very raunchy. Like, <laughs> nobody in real life uses the word raunchy other than describing. My mom like always mom used, used it. Oh, it's a, it was a little bit raunchy for me. Yeah, yeah. That's where it, mine comes from. My mom would use it all the time. In uh, Netflix, I think, he's using that terminology in one of their categories. I think they oh, have, really? like, raunchy late-night comedy is one of their oh. categories, I think. <laughs> which that's a, a bit of an exaggeration because it is like it's just like oh somebody's gonna make a poop or a dick joke like well that's yeah so gay like I, I don't know about where i'm coming into it with you know um incorrect assumptions but if i hear raunchy i want to see some boobs uh, well, for I, mean, sure. I don't know whether yeah. i'm i mean come on this is, this is rocket science here yeah Raunchy if you're too, gonna use that word, light boobage. you better dish yeah. out some boobs. <laughs> yeah, doesn't have to be a main main actor if they don't want to get laughed. Right. That's fine, but just somebody in the background. Yeah, in a fit in a <laughs> fit of excitement, just. Shink, ah! yeah. <laughs> oh, a car boy. goes by and rips them on top off. Of yeah, I don't no, no story, line, just a cutaway. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, watch. What was it? a film called Sex Drive. I remember that um, movie. I don't think I saw it, but I remember when it came out and I was like, oh, yeah? That's what we're... That's the, was, we're going to make a movie about this? I mean, <laughs> it's just right in that kind of Farrelly Brothers like thing of like a young guy who's uh, essentially, I guess, kind of catfishing somebody because he like posts all these photoshopped pictures of himself when he's chatting with this girl. He's like, oh, I'm putting up 400 like with this kind of bench presses and stuff and then she says hey do you want to meet up and he says yeah and so he has to go and drive to her um but they they released a like a you know an unrated even raunchier no. <laughs> version of it but the, the guys who made it uh did a little intro to it and they were like you know, and these kind of raunchy uh, uh, films and, you know, with extra footage or whatever, it always, it's always one way. It's always girls getting boobs out. We thought we'd redress that <laughs> during the film. There's like, you know, a couple of titty shots. Uh-huh. But then, <laughs> there's also a couple of it that are clearly like green screened in of like wide shots. And it's just a dude's Oh, boy. With his cock. Yeah. It's like you know what this is raunchy as well. Yeah. Okay. It it should let's give something to fair, the ladies. Fair play. That's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to take your house and say, well, that is a quality, isn't it? That's fair enough. They got me with one. Uh, do you remember that movie Hall Pass? I think is what it was called. Yes, Owen Wilson and Jason Sudeikis. Yes. I when I saw that movie, you know, I didn't. I didn't seek it out. I wasn't like, yeah, this is going to be great. It's just, I, it fell in my lap. And so I was watching it. Uh, yeah. And I was like, okay, hall pass. It's about, it's about 
some dudes just taking a night where they can do whatever they want. They get a free pass and to do whatever they want. I was like, cool. This is there's mm-hmm. probably be some boobs in here. No, there were none. Just dongs. I was like, this is, it's a movie about dudes having a free night and just dongs, just just dongs, <laughs> and and not, you know, like whole arm like dongs. Like <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> Like the kind of dongs that just make you feel a little bit crappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> is this what oh. people expect of me? <laughs> <laughs> is this uh, normal? Oh God! Please say no. Please say no. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, okay. my phone, I believe, is about to shit the bed. I think I have a f- maybe a minute or two left of. Of charge okay. here. But okay. Daniel Swan, thank mm-hmm. you. I will be there Very tonight. Well. And anybody watching should also join tonight. Um what's the 6 Pacific? PM time? Pacific. And so six PM Pacific. Eight Central and eight Central, sure. Then uh yeah, I am some art. Art, yeah. Um, <laughs> it will be a, a fun time. About an hour in, uh, about uh, yeah, well, about an hour and fifteen they tend to be. Um, but I, I noticed that last time someone came in towards the end, and I thought maybe they've learned the, the, the we kind of worked out the uh, the structure of it all that they are confident enough to come in about an hour into the into the proceeding. Because they just want to get involved with the, uh, oh, yeah. the using. They don't care about the quiz. They just want to be stupid. Those are fun. Music. I do enjoy Which, the music. You know what? It's fine. Yeah. It's, it, it all counts <laughs> as a view for me. So show up whenever the fuck you want. Yeah. Um, yeah. It should be a lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun. It, as a little as a little uh, IBOH podcast um, sneak preview, you ready for this? What's up? The Artist Spotlight this week is Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. There oh, we go. You heard it here awesome. first. Yes. Twitch.tv slash I am not me. I am not me. I am art. Yes. Truer words never spoken. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, man, I'm glad we got all this uh, this video stuff figured out. Now we'll have it all ready and good for next time. But, nice. Uh, yeah. Have, have yeah. a good rest of your day. Get you, get, go get you a burger. Go get you a hamburger. I'm going to get me a burger. I'm going to enjoy that <laughs> shit. I might get me some curly fries, too. I don't give a shit. Hot damn, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. All right then. Well, yeah, hope uh, Texas isn't too hot for you today. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to, to hearing your musings later. Awesome. Yeah, I'll see you there, man. Take Ta-ta. care, buddy. <laughs> Boy. Oh man, what a good time! Uh oh, I forgot to hang up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a good time! That guy's fun. That guy is a good egg. Thanks, guys, for joining. I'm Zach. I'll be over here. See you next time. How about some outro music? How about some? How about some? Why take up a little extra time just to play some outro music? Because! Because it's my show, damn it! And I'll do whatever I please. Okay? Okay. Bye!